And, and the, the reason why I call it a universal function approximator is that this computer, instead of you describing the function, a function could be a Newton's equation, f equals ma. That's a function. You write the function in software. You give it input, f, uh, uh, mass, acceleration. It'll tell you the force. Okay? And the way this computer works is really interesting. You give it a universal function. It's not f equals ma, just a universal function. It's a big, huge, deep neural network. And instead of describing the inside, you give it examples of input and output, and it figures out the inside. So you give it input and output, and it figures out the inside. A universal function approximator. Today, it could be Newton's equation. Tomorrow, it could be Maxwell's equation. It could be Coulomb's law. It could be thermodynamics equation. It could be you know, Schrodinger's equation for quantum physics. And so you could put any, you could have this describe almost anything, so long as you have the input and the output. Mm. So long as you have the input and the output. Or it could learn the in input and output. And so we took a step back and we said, hang on a second. This isn't just for computer vision. Deep learning could solve any problem. All the problems that are interesting, so long as we have input and output. Now, what has input and output? Well, what, the world. The world has input and output. And so we could have a computer that could learn almost anything, machine learning, artificial intelligence. And so we reasoned that maybe this is the fundamental breakthrough that we needed. There were a couple of things that had to be solved. For example, we had to believe that you could actually scale this up to giant systems. It was running in a they had two graphics cards, two GTX 580s. 